Good morning, everybody. It's Minen and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Tea Set. In the last episode, we got all of the teas completed, and we started shoving them down a bunch of people's gullets. In this episode, we are going to take a tea break and go on a workout with our good old buddy Sulu the Hamster, because we have finally gotten all of his toys, and we are able to do all the workouts that we could possibly do with him. So there are six different workouts that we need to do with him, and they don't have um, all single solutions. You could do a wide variety of different workouts, so you don't have to do the exact same one I'm going to do. I'm just going to be uh, following the guide and do whatever they tell me because I am a follower and not a leader. So first one you're going to want to put the apple right here, the house right here, the flower right here, and then get to work. I apologize in advance for what you're about to hear. I have no words. Some... For some reason, the hamster speaks, and he has a very creepy man voice. Like, I don't know if that's just what Luke hears, because he could actually talk to animals, but... I don't know, it's stinking creepy, and it disturbs the heck out of me. But if I exercise, it'll just make me hungrier. Oh my god. Sulu walked eight steps. His travel went from five to four, or his level went from five to four. So he's no longer a lump, and instead he is a slug. Okay, he's just like annoyed at life. Uh, same Sulu, same. Up next is, apparently his official name is Hammy, because that's what the guide is saying. Uh, for the 14 step workout, he, you could put the apple... Apple could stay in the same place. Okay. Uh, get rid of the house and the flower, though. Get the light bulb right here. And put the house right here. Got any snacks around here? Don't hold out on me. I don't know why they went with that voice. It's so stinking disturbing, but like... Oh my god, basically the thing you're supposed to do is supposed to get him to walk a certain amount of steps and the different toys make him uh, walk certain uh, amounts of steps and also have certain different effects on him. So that's what you're trying to do here, I guess. I think I'm getting the hang of this walking thing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, I don't understand. Now he's level 3 slaw. Now he's suddenly getting magically thinner. If only it was that simple to work out. Uh, let's see. Up next is the 18-step workout. I guess I could just go over the toys as well to show you what they are exactly and what they do. So the apple, as for the hamster's favorite snack, when he comes within three spaces of it, he walks toward it and ignores all other items around him. The block, this hamster isn't interested in these blocks, but they are useful for blocking his path and line of sight. Position them accordingly for maximum effectiveness. The house, your hamster is attracted to this adorable little house when it's within three spaces of him, but he always ignores it and heads toward a nearby apple if the choice exists. The tree stump, this tiny stump attracts the hamster if he's within three spaces of it. However, if an apple is also within three spaces, the hamster always goes for the apple instead. The flower, these charming little flowers attract the hamster if he's within three spaces of one, though he likes apples even more. The light bulb, when the hamster make, makes contact with this tiny light bulb, it flashes, causing your hamster friend to dash in the direction he's facing until he runs into something. The surprise box, which is called the Jack in the Box in UK version, when the hamster draws near, this item bursts open, surprising the hamster and causing him to run back the way he came until he bumps into something. The sandbox, uh, playing in the sandbox always makes the hamster some somersault straight for the pool, ignoring all items in the area. Somersaults don't count toward the step total. The pool... Uh, I think it's called the sand pit in the UK version, by the way. The pool, after playing in the sandbox, the hamster always somersaults straight toward the nearest pool. No matter what, somersaults don't count toward the step total. And finally, the trampoline. The trampoline makes the hamster jump forward two spaces and upon landing, run forward until he hits something. If he lands his jump on an item square, the item vanishes. Okay, so for the 18th step one, you need to put an apple right here, a light bulb right here, house right here, 
and a tree stump right here. Got any snacks around here? Don't hold out on me. Oh my god, why are you so creepy? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> oh, it's so thinking we're like unexpected, because like they never really said outright that Luke can talk to animals. They just say that he has a way with them. But it's so stinking creepy, I don't know, but whatever. I wish he had an adorable little hammy voice, but I guess not. And he eats a tree stump. And there you go. 18 steps. Hey! Suddenly I've got energy to spare! Irma Gerd. Uh, oh, he's looking rather thin right now. He's a loafer, though. He still isn't considered to be, like, thin, though. He looks pretty good to me. But whatever. Put these away. Up next is the... Uh, 24 step workout uh, we are going to put an apple right here again a light bulb right here flower goes right here tree stump right above here the house right here and the second house right here Come on, you're level two. You're a pretty good looking hamster right now. Uh, let's see, what does he got? He's going over here. It's that. Runs across. Uh, he's going to go for the house next, probably. Yep. And the flower? Uh, no, just going for the second house. Then probably for the stump and then finish off in the middle like those disappearing puzzles. And very good. Soon. I'm feeling mighty fine. And now he's level one, a jock. He looks kind of too skinny in my opinion though, but I guess if the game says he's healthy, then I shouldn't worry too much, but I think the rest are just for fun? But I don't know, after I exit out of this, it might tell me otherwise. There are only two more uh, different combos for us to do. So, let's just go ahead and show them off, show them off real quick. Uh, give him a 30-step workout. We're going to da -da -da -da, put the apple right here, the light bulb back right here. Uh, get the first house right here, second house right here. The tree stump goes up here, the flower right here, and the surprise box right here. Yeah, his personality doesn't really change, even though he's all skinny now. He does seem to be moving a little bit faster, though. And it's just like a fun little thing to watch him do. Just taking a nice little break from the main action. Just eats an entire house, so I think his diet's fine. He's still able to eat entire houses. Up uh, next is the flower, and finally the surprise box. Right back where you started. Is he gonna go to level zero now? Man, exercise rocks. Remember, kids, Sulu will now sniff out hint coins for you. Never miss another coin. Luke has become best buddies with Sulu. Layton's challenges: the animal lover's house has been added to your map. Uh, is he actually level zero now? Yeah, he is level zero, champster. Oh my god. And just for fun, there is one more- oh, there was a clear button this whole time. There's one more uh, combination we could do. It is the ultimate. Uh, just for fun, though. Give Sammy the hamster at least a 64-step workout. This is just the ultimate amount of steps you could possibly have him do. It doesn't do anything, because we already got the hamster pet lover's house unlocked, so you don't have to do this, but... Uh, let's see. We could still make him do it just for funsies, though. There are, again, a bunch of different combinations you could do, but I'm just going to do the one that the, the first one that pops up. So I'm going to put the first surprise box right here, the second one right there, and a regular block right here. I'm going to put a light bulb right here, a pool right there, the apple goes right here, the second apple goes down here, 
a house right there. Uh, the sandbox right over here. Uh, the trampoline goes here. Light bulb right here. A flower goes right here. The house goes right here. And the stump goes over here. Let's see Sulu run! And there you go, that is the maximum number of steps that Sulu could take in the hamster minigame. And as you saw as the reward for getting him to level zero, the champster. Uh, oh, I get it, champster, champ hamster, I get it. Uh, he is now like our snarf. Remember the tinker pup we had in Curious Village? He will do the same thing. He'll now look for hint coins for us, which is really nice. So that is cool and dandy and all that jazz. Uh, that guy won AT, I don't believe so. Nope, okay. Just gonna head on in here. I'll just look for the other guys as we go along, I guess. Uh, this guy, he has a puzzle for us. I believe he also wanted tea at one point. The name's Gregorio, and I love just like, to, like, mice love fancy cheese. Uh, let's go ahead. That sounds fast. Show me what you've got. He has puzzle number 107, the Knight's Tour 2. We saw this one already. Lead the Knight on trip around the board below. Hint number one, there are multiple solutions to this one, so before you start busting your brain, try moving things around according to your own set of rules. It beats just shuffling the piece around randomly. Hint number two, as a general plan of attack, start by traveling around the perimeter of the board, and once you feel the time is right, head in toward the center of the board. Hint number three, this puzzle is a variant on the Knight's Tour, is a classic, but the depth and elegance of its solution have kept it fresh for generations. Oh my god, that's not even a hint. Uh, let's see what we got here. As the game said, there are multiple solutions, but this is the one that gets it done in the minimum number of moves. Put it right here. Put it right here. Uh, bring him down here and here. And right here. Right over here. Up here. Uh, gonna bring him up to the top, and to the right, then bring him down here, right there, right there, um, down here, over here, up top, down below, oh god, um, I guess, right Wait a minute, that's, okay, right here, then downward, uh, right here, right here, up top, down below, in the middle, too slow, um, bring it down here, then this way, and that way. And just make it around town. Very good. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Sharp thinking, sonny boy. Real sharp. Now, what was I going to say? Oh, yes, the Herzens. Way back when Herzen Castle used to be quite the hot spot. The rich folks would throw balls there. Now, though... No one will go near the place. The castle supposedly got a vampire living in it. What I wouldn't give for things to go back the way they were. I miss back the old days when we were vampires roaming around. Sounds like someone complained about the Twilight books or whatever. Uh, we head back up here. Does he want tea? No. 
Um, I remember though, like back when the Twilight books were just books before the movies came out, like there was a girl I knew who like was obsessed with Edward and like drew like pictures of him, like fantasized over what he looks like. She's like, oh my god, he's so sexy, I wanna bang him so badly. I'm like, you don't even know what he looks like, he's a book character. He's like, I could dream, can I? I'm like, no. And then the movie came out and I guess she really could dream and her dreams came true. Uh, but my god, like I've, I've seen the first one and it's god awful and like I've heard of what happens in the other ones and I've seen clips of him like, how did people ever like this? Like, oh my god, it's so stinking bad. It's it, it's funny that like not even the, Jackpot. Jesus Christ, Sulu, that scared me. Um, it was it's funny that like not even the creators of the stinking film or the people who are on board with it could, are even willing to to defend it. Like the actors have said multiple times over the years that like they hate the film so stinking much. And it's like their biggest regret in their entire career, and like they think it's so stupid and everything. Like. Literally, the game, the movie is, uh, just for the fans, more or less, because no one else wants to even claim it. Uh, but yeah, those are our three hint coins, and what is this guy doing here? Seems Grinko. Welcome, friends, I'm Grinko, and I'm the curator of the Herzen Museum. We have an extensive collection of artifacts pertaining to the history of this town and the Herzen family. Sammy told me about you two. I hope you find your resources helpful to your search. Please feel free to pursue the collection of your heart's content. The professor and Luke decide to explore the Herzen Museum, you think? Uh, speaking of our collectibles, uh, oh, we got the another old diary thingy. Oh, this wretched life of mine. The girl I loved and to whom I was betrothed was abandoned, has abandoned me and all fled full, full sense. Did all that awful talk of curses scare her off, or did she truly leave me to be with someone she else she loves? Either way, her betrayal cuts me to the core. I trusted her, and now I'm lost. Where do I go from here? What's left for me? As for the camera, I wanted to see if we have all the pieces. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I think we need 11. So two more will be good to go. Uh, I guess we'll head inside. A uh, whole new area for us. Like, I've gotten so used to this town finally, but... Uh, is that what I think it is? That is a photograph of the entire Herzen family who were responsible for Fulsense's legendary wealth. The distinguished older gentleman on the left is Duke Henson. His youngest son, Frederick, is in the middle, and his eldest son, Anton, is on the right. That Frederick, that's Mr. Beluga, the founder and owner of the Voluntary Express, is it not? Oh, you know him? Well, in addition to owning a railway, Frederick is a friend of mine and owner of this museum. It's a sad story, really. He cut all ties to his father and left town 50 or so years ago. When he left, he took a small portion of the Herzen wealth and used it to start his railway. Yes, Frederick is quite a study in contradictions. He disliked his father enough to change his name, but he returned to Fulsense to found this museum. Did the feud extend to all the members of the family? No, Frederick and Anton were always quite close, but their relationship with their father was never the same after that fateful day. What day was that, sir? The day Duke Henson discovered the vein of gold that brought so much wealth to Fulsense. He was so different. A man, he was such a different man back after that. I can't read. Something changed him. Greed, perhaps? Well, yes, that. But there was someone more, something more than greed infesting his heart. What do you think it was? I know. I think it's best if we end this chat here. It's not my place to speculate about what goes on in the hearts of other people. Of course. Tell, the, tell me this, though, if you can. Where is Anton now? That's a good question. I've heard rumors that he might still be living in that old castle. But I can't imagine anyone would live in a place so run down that people call it a vampire den. Gracious, look at how long we've been chatting. I think it's time for me to get back to work. Please look around for as long as you like. I guess even rich people have problems, huh? Mm. Well, that was pretty eye-opening to see. 
This place sure has a lot of stuff. Don't you suppose this is a picture of the late duke? I believe so, yes. The old duke Harrison died a while back and um, left behind a massive fortune. If he's gone, who is this vampire the whole town is talking about? Sammy mentioned that Mr. Beluga had an older brother here. I'd say he's likely the man at the heart of all this talk. But if he's Mr. Beluga's older brother, he would have to be old and feeble by now. I thought vampires didn't age. Hmm. Wait, what did he say? It's like a fortune teller's house. I thought he was talking about like specifically the fortune teller's house, aka Granny Riddleton. Uh, let's see. Got anything else in here? Thankfully, he doesn't make us examine. Spoke too soon. Oh, thank you for not like doing the entire thing again. That was horrible. That's it, it seems. Wow, that's the entire museum. Just that painting. But I guess that is rather eye-opening, considering uh, the box art of this game. And I guess I could just talk about this now. Uh, that guy in the painting, it looked very much like this guy in the box art. I thought that was a girl up until this point in the game, so that was kind of funny to discover that for the first time. We haven't examined every... Wait, we haven't. Uh, okay, we could have looked at this. Professor, take a look at this case of knickknacks. These appear, these appear to be common household items owned by the Harrison family. Some of them look positively ancient. Quite, the Harrison family clearly has a long and rich family history. Uh, that's it? That isn't it. What else do you want me to do, buddy? Uh, there's nothing to look around here. There's only one pathway. Only in this room. What else have we looked at? Thanks, Sulu. I mean, did he find one? Okay, there it is. What else is there, Leighton? So this is the late Duke Herzen. That's it. What? Um... Layton, I'm getting completely lost here. There's literally nothing else to examine. Huh? What? Up there? Jesus, what the fruit? That's one impressive statue. I guess that must be Duke Harrison, huh? This entire museum appears to be dedicated to celebrating his achievements, so I'd have to agree. But wait a second. I thought Mr. Beluga owns this place. Yes, I believe that's the case. Isn't it funny that he built this whole place to honor his father? Maybe he's not so bad after all. Or maybe he's accommodating for something, perhaps a bit of guilt? Are you serious, Leighton? What else is there? He's got nothing new to say to us. Wait, what? He does! I'm sure you already know this, that the Elysium box is a Herzen family heirloom. At Mr. Beluga's request, I have been researching the history of Volsens and the Herzen family. In doing so, I have uncovered a secret in this town's history that reveals well, the truth about the Elysium box. Intriguing. What is the secret you speak of? It's easy to ask questions when you don't know what you're getting into, Mr. Layton. But if you're thirst for the truth and you are ready to face it, you do well to come visit the town mine. Many miners used to keep little journals down there to document their time back below ground. If you could find one of those, you'll have a first-hand account of what transpired back then. Thank you for the advice. We'll go have a look for ourselves. Come, Luke. Let's head to the mine. And we got a diary key. Hey. Let's check this out. The final row. Ever since she left, Father and I have been at each other's throats day and night. The mysterious disease plaguing our town continues to drive people to flee their homes for a safer life elsewhere. If only she had stayed with me, I feel like I could have weathered the storm. I still ask myself why she left this town. If she truly loved me, then why did she leave? There's only three more to go. Getting very close to uncovering the entire history of what happened in this town. I guess we're headed to the mines, wherever that is. I actually don't know where the mines are. Is it supposed to be? Is that arrow, like, indicating where I'm supposed to go? It might actually be. I just never really took it into account this whole time. 
I uh, just want to check. Do you have any puzzles for us? Do you have any puzzles for us? Of course they don't have puzzles for us, so I don't even know why I bother. And up here. Uh, these guys don't have puzzles either. And now, head in here. Uh, wait, no, not in here. That's the wrong place. I'm gonna go to the left. And finally, we'll be able to pass through here. But not until we get something from Sulu. I somewhat regret, uh, teaching him all the ways of the exercise, and that guy looks incredibly creepy. Uh, let's see what we got. Oh, there's two. And nothing else. You two must have nerves of steel to come all the way out here. But that doesn't mean I won't test what you made what you're made of. Try this puzzle on for size. Puzzle number 87, different suits. Below are 16 cards. There are four cards from each suit. Diamonds, clubs, spades, and hearts. The cards are arranged in a 4x4 grid as shown below, and four cards have already been put down. Arrange the remaining cards so that each vertical column, horizontal row, and diagonal line of four cards contains the one card from each suit. Tap a space to place a card there to... or a change... or to change a card suit. Jesus, I can't read. Hint number one. Let's start by seeing if we can't dig up a few more hints from work, uh, to work from. There's a card from the table that belongs to the row the heart is in, the column the club is in, and the diagonal line the diamond is in. Therefore, you can safely conclude that the card in question must be a spade. This is the kind of logic you'll need to use to solve this puzzle. Hint number two. What card do you suppose belongs in the bottom left corner? The column in this space is a part of it already, already has a diamond and heart in it, and there's a spade in the immediate right of it. Taking the above into consideration, we can conclude that the card in question must be a club. Knowing this, we can also fill in the last card in the leftmost column, which has to be a spade. Hint number three. Need another hint, do you? Oh, getting sassy, I see. Okay, then here's a good one. The card at the top right corner is a spade, and the one at the bottom of that same column is a heart. The rest of the solution is up to you, but it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. This is a very aesthetically pleasing design, I'll say that. Uh, we're gonna put a heart right here, spade right there, spade right here, put a club right here, heart right here, diamond in the rough, diamond in the sky. I ran out of songs that have the word diamond in it. Uh, put a heart, put a club, put a spade, and put a club. This should do the trick. And there we have it. Oh god, I was wiping my eye for a second. I thought I didn't see the smiling light, and I was like, oh no! Nicely done. Did that one ever give you a brain... Did that one ever give your brain a workout? It's a great puzzle to set up with the real cards and share with a friend. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Primal puzzle solving right there. Listen, hers and castle is on the other side of the forest. No one with, will come within a mile of it, but I hear the Duke's fortune is just sitting there in piles. If you're thinking about heading in, you uh, keep your guard up against the vampire or whatever is in there. Get that puzzle. I think if we, we head back, he might want some tea. Guess there wasn't anything special about this guy. He's just a regular NPC. Oh, no, that was the place we were supposed to go. No! This must be the wind we heard about, Professor. Yes, it appears that... Or the mine. How do you read wind? It appears to be sealed off. Just imagine it, Luke. They used to dig for gold here. From what we've heard about the gold changing of this town, there must be there must have been a ton of it down there. But if it did so much for the town's of development, why would uh, why would they seal off the place? It's a question we might be able to answer if we find some account of what transpired here. No sense in any more speculation. Let's venture in. But not before going back and hiccuping and going up here and seeing a dead end. So there was no point. Maybe there's a hint coin? Maybe? Possibly? There you go. There's one. At least our backtracking wasn't all in vain. Oh, wait, could we go in there? That's probably gonna be like, let's not go in there right now, Luke. Or it's locked. That works too. <laughs> I 
Okay, I think... Oh, hey, he has. He wants some tea, finally. Alright, uh, let's see what he wants. He wants a... Uh, number 10. He actually wants the number 10, the cane, twilight. Are you sure? Are you certain? Well, then drink up. There you go. It's one spicy finish. In bed. Okay, no, not really. What's the matter now, sir? I could still see that stupid fog. Maybe the air in full sense is just really polluted. I guess that's it for now. And I guess that's it for this episode. We made a lot of progress in getting to the, uh, through the museum and also... Uh, serving tea to people, and we got all of Sulu's minigames taken care of, which is really nice. Next time on Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box, we are going to head into the mines and see what sort of hints we can find as to what transpired in this town way back when. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.